Okay, so first of all, it took a while because I've been busy with a bunch of stuff, mostly Deathversary, um, which I actually streamed this year. That was a lot of fun. But yes, Godzilla Continuity 2 is currently being edited, and I'm not going to get too in the weeds because I think this video might actually be seen by people who don't know me, like, personally. So I'm going to get to the point, but I just wanted to say this is a short thing, no secret segment, I'm not going to bust your balls about that, but the thing is, I need to get this out and put this video out there now because it will be irrelevant imminently. And I want solid video proof of this out there. So when it's time to say I told you so, the world will know that I did, in fact, tell you so. Now, uh, I'm writing this in the past, so I don't know if I went through with it or not. Because it's very silly. But I may or may not have given this video an extremely clickbaity title with a thumbnail showing uh, LK520, or Cyber Sub-Zero as his friends call him, and the Mortal Kombat 1 Scorpion. Uh, claiming that they're the same character. Uh, now, that's obviously not true from most perspectives, uh, right? That's like a dumb clickbaity thing. You know how it goes. YouTube is a shit festival. The world is a vampire. I'm being hyperbolic because I think it's funny. And hopefully you do too. Rather, because Mortal Kombat 1 is a complete re-envisioning of the entire franchise from the ground up, it's probably more accurate to say that the entire roster of Mortal Kombat 1 is made up of all new characters, with the exception of Fire God Liu Kang and probably Shang Tsung. Well, okay, almost certainly Shang Tsung. So keep that in mind with what I'm about to tell you, a boot, damn it, that this Mortal Kombat ninja that I'm going to be talking about is altogether is an altogether newly written character based on ideas from the history of the series, but it's essentially something new. Uh, that's important. I want you to keep that in mind. But um, having said that, yes, Scorpion in Mortal Kombat 1 is Kwai Liang. Uh, I'm editing this in real time, by the way, <laughs> so bear with me, please. Um, and I don't mean that as in, like, Scorpion is Kwai Liang and Taro Bang, or, like, is it possible that maybe he could be? Or, like, this is my personal fan theory on why I think this is true. No, no, no. This isn't any of those things. This is a fact. I'm stating a fact, not a hypothesis. And you may not like that. You may disagree with me. And you can certainly not like and disagree with the fact that gravity exists all day, too, but that doesn't make you any more correct. And when I say this, I'm not being facetious. I'm 100% dead certain of this, and after watching this, if you weren't already, maybe you will be, too. Now, how can I be so certain? Well, let's take a look at what we know. Okay, number one. Sub -Zero, both Sub-Zero and Scorpion are members of the Lin Kuei who are working along e alongside each other as allies. Two, they are both alive, neither of them are revenants. Three, Sub-Zero maintains his ice powers from previous iterations of the character, unsurprisingly, and Scorpion still wields his spear and at times has been shown to be able to ignite it into flames, despite being clearly alive, implying that he has some sort of pyrokinesis power rather than any sort of hellfire thing. They are brothers. This is not figurative. They are biological brothers related by blood. They have the same heritage, the same genetics, the same ethnicity. Sub-Zero's real name is Bi Han. Kwai Liang has been name dropped, and so we know that he also exists in this world. In the previous Mortal Kombat universes, both Bi Han and Kwai Liang were brothers. Hanzo Izashi, the real name of Scorpion in the games of the previous universes, was Japanese with a Japanese name. Uh, gameplay has already been shown Whoops. There we go. Gameplay has already been shown and press demos have been playable at events that were available for journalists, pros, and YouTubers. Sub-Zero was playable, but not Scorpion, the face of the entire franchise, Ed Boon's favorite character, and the one that has always been playable in every previous initial demo of this sort. And finally, the next round of combat casts is uh, going to begin very soon hence my impetus to get this video out like yesterday, and it has been heavily implied that Scorpion will be featured as the first character. Now, 
Let me get this stuff off the screen. <laughs> it's a nightmare, but I got to do it because I don't want to have to edit this later. OK, uh, so keeping all of this in mind, uh, there is really no other possible conclusion we can make other than uh, Kuai Liang is Scorpion. Now, I get it. The series has been kicking for over 30 years. It's got a legacy now. People have expectations and the brand has an identity and these characters have beloved fan bases that are now generational. Making Scorpion Kuai Liang is a very big change. And if you're an especially conservative person who is afraid of change, I can see why that might be scary or something you want to reject outright. I can appreciate that point of view just so that there's no doubt in this so we've explored every avenue, let's take a look at all of the arguments used to try and cope, or sorry, rebut this idea. <clears throat> Argument number the first. It's stupid and I don't like it. Uh, this is the number one most frequently used reason uh, that I see on why it can't be true without exaggeration. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but you will notice that this is an opinion and not an argument and offers no evidence to the contrary. In fact, I wouldn't even bother to mention this as an argument against Scorpion's identity if it weren't for two things. One, that it is, again, the primary argument used most frequently by the largest number of people. And two, to point out that while not the best argument, it is emblematic of the mindset of the people who are denying it. As a rebuttal, this is not an argument, cope harder. Um, argument number the second. Maybe they're half-brothers or they're brothers in the figurative sense. Um, the exact words Ed Boon said was blood brothers and I don't think he was talking about them cutting their hands and swapping blood because why would he have meant that? That's insane. They are definitely biologically related. Could they still be half-brothers? Maybe. But you have to ask yourself this question. What is the point of making this change to the lore just to look for ways to undo it so you can make the game more like every other previous game when they chose to name it fucking Mortal Kombat 1. Ahem. <clears throat> Argument number the third. Scorpion's name has always been Hanzo Hisashi, so even if he is Bihan's brother, his name will still be Hanzo Hisashi. <clears throat> I appreciate this, and you are absolutely correct. In every past timeline, aside from the novelization and Conquest with a C, Scorpion's true name has been Hanzo Sashi. However, if you haven't seen the ending to Mortal Kombat 11, I feel like now is a good time to remind you of how it ended. After defeating Kronika and then Shang Tsung, Fire God Liu Kang took up the task of rewriting history from the very beginning of time. The entire Mortal Kombat multiverse, from the Big Bang or whatever the hell went on with the One Being and all that kind of stuff, up to the present time of Mortal Kombat 1, every single atom, every grain of the sands of time, all of it has been completely rewritten from scratch. The entire purpose of this game is to allow the writers to completely reboot the Mortal Kombat timeline and characters, aside from Liu Kang, in a brand new, fresh way that have never been seen before. Nothing is sacred. We can't take anything for granted because any assumption leaves open the possibility that these writers were given the, the charge to do a true, legit reboot of the lore and then they all collectively cited to just not do that and phone it in and instead turn in a draft that is 99% the story from all of the other previous games, movies, comics, etc. just regurgitated for the umpteenth time specifically so that it wouldn't offend you in particular because you are afraid of change. And maybe that's what you want to happen, um, but buddy, cope harder because that's not what this game is. And to address the idea that Scorpion's name is Hanzo, Hanzo says she is a Japanese name, and this scorpion is Chinese. We know this because he is the biological brother of a man named Bi Han, which is a Chinese name. Why would a guy who's so incredibly Chinese that his brother's name is literally Bi Han have a Japanese name? Any explanation you cook up for this has to be so incredibly convoluted that you're basically writing fan fiction as a way to cope with the fact that, again, you personally do not like the change. Ahem. Argument number the whatever. Maybe Kui Liang is their third brother and he just hasn't been revealed yet. Ahem. Now, as I've mentioned before, one of the things that we know 
is that Kui Liang, the name, has been dropped in the intro dialogues. This is why I'm confident that Scorpion's name is specifically Kui Liang and not something completely new. Because why would they name drop a character who is known to be Bihan's brother in every previous timeline, only this time to have him not be Bihan's brother? While there is nothing that precludes there actually being three brothers, once again, we can definitely rule out the possibility that one of these hypothetical three brothers' names is Hanzo, because that is a Japanese name. Now, here is where I have to admit that yes, it is indeed technically possible that Scorpion's name is something completely new still, and that Kwai Liang is a third brother, and that even if Scorpion isn't Hanzo, he's still not Kwai, which is like, I don't know, Han Liang or whatever, sure. And it's also technically possible that Fujin is in the game as Raiden's mortal brother, and it's also possible that Goro is short because he's from a race of pygmy Shokan this time around. Oh, 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 maybe Baraka is like, um, that pointlessly convoluted uh, fan film, and it's actually a doctor that did weird surgery on himself. Oh, I know. What if Jax is Cyrax's dad? Or, or what if Mocap is Motaru? Or, or what if Mita is Scarlet's brother? Or, oh, 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 what if, what if, what if? But what makes more sense? That they showed us two brothers in every trailer so far, and the names Bihan and Kwai Liang have been revealed in the intro dialogues, and those names are the names of the brothers we've seen? Or, your needlessly elaborate fan fiction that you've written specifically so that you personally can cope with Scorpion not being Kwai Liang because you don't like the change. Uh, number though, whatever, plus one. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Fucked up. Uh, oh my god, where was I? Is the third brother. No, we're not on that. We're on... There we go. Scorpion uses Japanese weapons. M. Uh, oh, we're almost, we're almost done. Okay, so Scorpion uses Japanese weapons, uh, so therefore he must be Japanese and have a Japanese name. Ahem. Okay, so uh, again, he's a Chinese dude this time. He has a Chinese name. We've already addressed this. Now, uh, this is actually the second most frequently used rebuttal I've seen, and it's also the second stupidest, because it presumes that in the Mortal Kombat universe, Earthrealmers are forbidden from using any weapon that wasn't invented in the country they ethnically originate from. And I don't really understand what mechanism they think enforces this. Maybe it's like a, a Hammer Dracula movie where if a Chinese dude so much as touches a katana, his hands start to burn. Or like any weapon invented in a different country is holy water or something. And given that countries and ethnicities are constantly changing over time, how exactly does the system work? This might sound like I'm making fun of how stupid this argument is, you know, because I am, but the world of Mortal Kombat is filled with alternate dimensions and magic and strange four-armed monsters and all of this crazy shit. So really, if this is your evidence, um, explain to me how the system actually works. I'm not saying it's impossible, actually. I'm, I'm saying, how do the weapons know when to burn the hands of the people who touch them? Uh, what if you're mixed race? Does What if you're ethnically from one place but are a citizen of somewhere else. How does that actually work? Because to be 100% clear here, what you're saying is that every single character in Mortal Kombat 1 who is an American, but not ethnically so, not a Native American, can't use any weapons other than tomahawks and bows and arrows? So Stryker can't exist. Uh, the entire police force of the United States can't carry guns because gunpowder was invented in China. Is that is that seriously the kind of world that you're suggesting? Or are you just writing fan fiction because you personally don't like the change and are trying to cope? We know that this game takes place in a time where big flat screen TVs exist. So it is probably set in contemporary times, which means that any fighter from anywhere, anywhere in the world has access to any weapon that they know of, can manage to find and can train with. You can, right now, go order a kunai for yourself if you want to. And I can guarantee you that Amazon will not card you to make sure that you have a Japanese name. More importantly, within the lore of Mortal Kombat, um, in, this, in the previous timelines, ninjutsu as a martial art was founded by a rogue member of the Lin Kuei named Takeda, who defected from the clan hundreds of years ago and fled to Japan. 
Um, this actually comes from the real life legend of the Lin Kuei, which makes the same claim. The fact that Sub-Zero and Scorpion are in the same clan means that this brand new world, that in this brand new world, the Shirai Ryu were almost certainly never actually founded. Although ninjas might still exist, if you're going to go that deep into the lore, then you have to acknowledge the fact that ninja techniques that the old versions of Scorpion used originated from the Lin Kuei. So a Lin Kuei using them in this timeline is actually consistent with the old lore. Again, it does not need to be consistent with the old lore, but in this instance, it absolutely is. Eh, 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 eh. Two more, almost done, folks. Okay. Bihan is ascended from cryomancers, which means his whole bloodline should have ice powers, but Scorpion doesn't, meaning blah, 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 and on and on and on. Okay, so yes, in the old timelines of the previous 11 main series games, the Sub-Zero brothers were descended from cryomancers, a race that was originally from Outworld, then apparently, originally, originally from Edenia, and then exiled to Outworld, or maybe became a part of Outworld after the realms were merged, but then at least one of them left Earth Realm, and they ended up becoming the great grandparent of the Sub Zero brothers, making their grandfather the first Sub Zero, who was basically human but with the cryokinetic abilities of the cryomancers. This is exactly the story of the past games. You are correct. You paid attention. Gold star, have a cookie. Now that we're done talking about that, let's reiterate a couple of facts to completely destroy this argument. Again, this is not Mortal Kombat 11. This is Mortal Kombat 1. You got to take that extra digit away off the end. This is a completely new universe rewritten from the dawn of time. Literally every single atom and grain of the sands of time has been totally rewritten according to the fire god Liu Kang's personal whims to create a brand new, completely distinct world where everything that has ever come before can't be taken for granted. Again, both brothers are clearly seen alive, and yet only Sub-Zero has the ice powers, while his brother uses the spear and has some form of pyrokinesis. What does that mean? Simple. The brothers in this brand new universe are not genetically predisposed to have cryomancy abilities, or if they are, it isn't passed down to everyone in the bloodline. Personally, I think we can kiss the concept of cryomancers as a race goodbye, because with both of these living humans having thematically opposed powers, it strikes me as blatantly poetic, especially the part where Bihan seems to have his old temper and tendency towards evil that we've seen in past iterations of the character, while Kwai seems much more level-headed and even-tempered from what we've seen so far. So they gave the hothead ice powers and the cool customer fire powers. This is the most blatant symbolism I've ever seen, and I watch Godzilla movies more frequently than anyone else on the planet. The source of their power, blah, 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 powers will be different, and uh, it will have a story-related significance to it. Trust me on this. My writer senses are tingling. My hypothesis is that they might be going for something like the Arcana whole thing that they used in the last live-action movie. But to be clear, this whole last paragraph is speculation. All I'm saying is, from the facts that are available to us, we can completely ignore the old rules. Remember, Melina was once a hybrid, and now she's a pure-blooded Adinian, so races can change, people. Kwai Liang is either not a cryomancer, or cryomancer heredity doesn't work the same in this new timeline. And the last argument that I've heard, Bihan is going to become Noob Saibot, because he always has... So obviously there has to be blah, 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 blah. Okay. No, he's not. Um, since we know that Kwai Liang doesn't have the ice powers, there will be no one left to pick up the mantle of Sub-Zero should be Han die and become Noob Saibot again, excepting maybe the possibility of Frost. Now, I think that would actually be kind of cool, but keep in mind that since the ice powers are no longer hereditary, um, or at least not inherited by everyone, we have absolutely no reason to believe that Bihan isn't the very first Sub-Zero. And in the last timeline, it was Bihan and Kwai's grandfather who was the first, first, who we actually see a version of in the Conquest Mode of Deception, uh, which would make Bihan Sub-Zero the third and legitimizes Kwai Liang using the name after his brother's death. But this time we have no reason to believe it's a family title. So Bihan may very well be the first and last character in this timeline to ever use the name Sub-Zero. And if Mortal Kombat X has taught us anything, it's that there cannot be a single Mortal Kombat game that passes without at least one playable 
living character named Sub-Zero. Not a single one. Do not hold your breath for Mortal Kombat 13 to feature Scorpion and Noob, but no Sub-Zero because it's never going to happen. I have heard a fan theory going around that maybe the Hanzo Hisashi of this timeline will become Noob Saibot instead. And while this is an interesting idea and falls in line with the way things are being shook up to remix the identities of the three, Hanzo goes from being Zero to Scorpion. Uh, oh, whoops, whoop, what, I read that line wrong. Let me back it up. Hanzo goes from being Scorpion to Noob. Uh, Bihan goes from being Noob to Sub-Zero, and Kwai Liang goes from Sub-Zero to Scorpion. I, I kind of hope they don't go this way because I like the idea that Liu Kang chose to create this timeline so that Hanzo no longer had to fight, but could simply live out his entire life in peace with his wife and children. And he may not be able to give everyone peace in this new world. After all, he can only change the circumstances of these characters' lives, their nurture. He can't change their nature or the nature of free will. So. The new Bihan seems to be just as violent as before, but if he isn't able to make some things better, if he can't bring peace to at least a few people, then it will all have been for nothing. Oh yes, I know, it's a fighting game with a dramatic story. There needs to be conflict. It can't all be peaceful. I'm not stupid. But I think that Hanzo Hisashi gives them the perfect opportunity to show that Liu Kang can and has made positive changes that have improved the lives of people who in past versions of this franchise have struggled so much and i think that's kind of beautiful still though noob is a very popular character and a big part of the brand and i think if it's going to be anyone it'll probably be hanzo so you know i'm not going to hold my breath um now so the last thing i want to say is thus uh if this is truly the reason why Scorpion wasn't playable in the press demos and he is being saved for the first combat cast specifically so they can have this reveal, what's the point if so many people are, are already figuring this out? Um, to that point, uh, to, I mean, to the point where I myself can be 100% certain. Okay, so, um, well, to that I have a few things to say. The first is that, um, wow, 20, I thought this was going to be short. Um, the first is that, uh, where was I? Uh, right, right, right. You may not like this, but as someone who spends more time than is probably healthy watching videos about weird dumb stuff like flat earthers and creationists, uh, taken as a large enough sample size, people tend to be kind of dumb. Not everyone, of course, and this is borne out by the large number of people who have figured this out or at least suspect it. However, I have seen others uh, reaching this conclusion with some or nearly the same while I have seen uh, people reaching this conclusion with some or nearly the same certainty of, that I have, uh, that population is, from what I can tell, a very small minority. Most people haven't kept up with all of the news. They have missed a few things, are blinded by their own biases and expectations, or are just understandably hesitant to say conclusively that Scorpion is quiet just because it sounds so crazy to say that out loud after like 30 years of that not being the case. So. Yes, people have figured it out, but you can't tell me with the talk about this, the way that it is now, that officially confirming that Scorpion is Kwai Liang in the first Mortal Kombat 1 combat cast won't still completely blow everyone's mind. All I'm saying, I mean, listen, it's even going to blow my mind and I know it for a fact. So like even just hearing them say it out loud is still going to be so wild to me. So all I'm saying is, don't say that I didn't specifically tell you that it was coming, because I just have, and that means you'd be lying. And uh, stay tuned. I swear a secret segment is coming. Please believe me.